typical traffic in uh, in Peru and you see cars are passing to the right including commercial vehicles and Welcome YouTube. Thank you for checking out my channel. If this is your first time, please like and share and all the good stuff. And if you have any question about what I'm about to share with you guys, uh, make sure to leave them in the comment below. And also I'm gonna leave a link for my uh, social media and you can contact me there on my Instagram if you have any questions just a disclaimer here I am not uh, here to um, share make you scared or deter you from getting a car in Peru I'm simply sharing my personal experience uh, with the car definitely I do not regret what I did I got the car uh, from Hertz for about four or five days about five days in total like four days and a half but I counted as five and uh, in order to go to Paracas like you guys uh, know Paracas like four or five hours away from um, Lima and going south and uh, I do recommend having a car when you go there uh, because once you get there really there's nothing much to do unless you get like a uh, a, um, uh, a a car over there or like in the transportation there is just gonna have to, you are basically in the mercy of the uh, the tour the tour guide they do have a very interesting stuff they can rent so many things but I made a different video for that one you can check it out anyways this video is only gonna be talking about my experience uh, getting a car and things I wish I knew it's like how I titled this video and things I wish somebody told me before I got the car uh, so I'm gonna list uh, the things and mistakes and I hope you guys if you're watching this and get in a car hopefully you learn from my own mistakes first of all I got a four I got this car from Hertz in Metaflores and that's a mistake number one because Metaflores is kind of tend to be a little bit on the higher end so price is gonna be a little bit higher I could have saved some money if I got the car from a different places in nearby cities and not in Miraflores because Miraflores things are a little bit more expensive that's mistake number one I do highly recommend you guys get a larger vehicle if you're going to Paracas please do not get a uh, uh, Toyota Etos or like one of those like super small vehicles the road and the um, the road to Paracas is very broken and you can have a, a good portion of it off-road especially in Paracas like you I'm gonna show in the video so that was a that was a good thing that I got a larger vehicle with a high uh, ground clearance which I honestly got it for the car. I really love this vehicle that we do not get, unfortunately, in the United States, the Toyota Hilux. Um, uh, the road, and the thing is, I wish also to be told that driving, coming from the U.S., driving in Peru is, I don't know, I don't think there's another better way to say it is a freaking nightmare like you will be you will see four or five cars in in a three lanes or two lanes the three cars and a bike and stray dog and people like passing you from the right on the shoulder and it is a challenge you're gonna run into a lot of surprises and very aggressive driving and also keep in mind uh, this is 
not in the United States and it's one of the largest cities in South America in, in terms of population like cars is just you're gonna have driving there is just put it this way is a nightmare I did mention that I drove in two different countries also uh, Mexico I drove also in Colombia and Ecuador definitely Ecuador and Colombia are piece of cake in, in comparison to Mexico and um, Peru uh, leave it to you like I mean you can try it for yourself and uh, you're gonna encounter also a lot of things like for example on the way I almost crashed into a semi truck there was a backed up traffic for whatever reason I'm not sure why it was but guess what looks like they're gonna sit there for like a whole night which that's what ended up happening it ended up taking about six hours for traffic to clear uh, but the thing was <clears throat> as I was approaching that stop traffic believe it or not I'm not I'm not making this up the semi truck that was stopped in front of me has his lights on and going to sleep not making this up literally he decided to sleep in the middle of the road but the traffic is like is not moving anyway so thank god they had the high clearance car I uh, was allowed to kind of like go through on the median and go on the opposite way for almost like 20 miles and then going on a, another route that took me there which was completely off-road so uh, having a car that has a high clearance it really was a huge plus for me but keep in mind like no triangles no four flashers nothing is literally oh it's a lot of traffic looks like we're gonna stay here for a while he turned off the lights including the clearance lights and nothing I almost crashed into him okay so keep that in mind have a very become a very defensive driver because you're gonna see things you will never ever see in the US and I'm not knocking on them it's just different I came from a third world country I'm kind of used to this but you keep that in mind and you try to stay safe also the last one but not least uh, be careful with your speed they are not like the US as long it is illegal everything is legal as long as there's no police that doesn't work there in Colombia in uh, Ecuador and in, in, also in Peru they use radars so the speed is I, I believe it's a hundred on the freeway which is about 60 miles an hour if you exceed the speed uh, they catch you with their radar and they have a checkpoint and these checkpoints they will tell you that you exceeded the speed and they will write you a ticket in my scenario I got into the checkpoint just before uh, Paracas and I was told to they the guy came and checked all my paper and he said well you were going 200 miles an hour I'm like dude there's no way I was going that fast it was like well we're gonna find you for about 2,000 solis which is equate to like a few hundred dollars I think five hundred dollars something like that I asked for the ticket and then um, the guys like look I'm gonna work with you but you gotta give me something and then we work it out I work it out anyways like you gonna get attention from police sometimes and you might sometimes have to <laughs> deal with them and I got written a good ticket for like a few hundred dollars so just put it this way for exceeding the speed which I still I, I felt like a little bitter I should have negotiated down which that's something I forgot I also have in our in my country and we do the same BS but yeah and they pay a few hundred dollars for that ticket so you do have 
that in mind and I would keep like small bills sometimes they let you like just pay the ticket at the checkpoint if you get there early enough which I was but that's something I want you to be to expect that it might happen to you but on my way back nothing happened uh, I did not get checked in and I was going well below speed limit the final point I would say you're really gonna struggle a lot with parking like as soon as I got the car uh, I was having a hard time I wasn't paying I never paid attention for that like in Paracas I, I literally know where to park in uh, Lima nowhere to park you, like barely can get up a, a spot to park the car so with well, these, all these things like I personally probably would not rent another car in Peru <laughs> due to my experience but those just few things for you I hope you guys enjoy the video and don't forget to subscribe and leave a comment if you enjoyed the video and ask me for you kind of what you guys want to know next and what kind of videos you guys enjoy the most and thank you guys for watching until the next time I'm out peace Jai.